guys, welcome to Exploration Wednesday. And this week we're gonna be talking about games on the trail. So we're gonna talk about some early colonial games and then some games Lewis and Clark mentioned in their journals. So at the table here, I have a lot of different games and toys that you might recognize and you might not. Some of these are really popular today, like the yo-yos or the spinning tops. And some of these other ones might be a little bit more unfamiliar that you might not have seen before. And so we're gonna imagine 200 years ago, if you were you know, living on the frontier like Lewis and Clark were when they were little, these were some of the toys you might have had. So Lewis and Clark, they grew up in the late 1700s. They were actually really young during the American Revolution. They were living on the frontier in Virginia and they didn't have access to a lot of toy stores. And so when you're living on a frontier, maybe if you're living on a farm, you would have to use the material you had lying around. So kids had to be really creative. They had to make up their own games. They had to make their own toys. And luckily, if you had trees, if you had leftover rope, leftover clothes, you could be pretty creative with the toys you made. For example, we have a corn husk, husk doll right here. So you were on the farm, that leftover corn husk, you turn into a doll. There's also lots of mentions about rag dolls. So from old scraps of clothing, moms would make rag dolls for their kids. Another toy you might see that you might make if you're living on a farm is a spinning top out of wood. Another one that might be a little bit unfamiliar is this ball and cup game. And you'll notice none of this stuff is plastic. A few of these things are plastics, but those aren't from the late 1700s or early 1800s because there wasn't plastic back then. Everything was made you know, from wood, from cloth, what the materials they had lying around. And this is a really fun game, the ball and cup game, is where you would hold the cup and then you try to get the ball to land inside with one hand. And you would just swing that right up and try to land it inside. No luck today. So these are certain games they would have. Some that you still might sound familiar today are checkers, chess. Those are games you could draw into the dirt, you know, use rocks as your pieces, puzzles, dominoes, marbles. Another game would be jacks. So you might have these, maybe your parents or your grandparents might have this toy. Little jack pieces. And they didn't have a bouncy ball, so they would use a wooden ball. And this is where you would throw the wooden ball into the air, try to pick up a jack, and grab that ball before it fell back down to earth. So it took a lot of skills, a lot of hand-eye coordination to play some of these games, like jacks where you toss them up, try to pick them up before the ball falls. You had your ball and cup game. You had your spinning tops. You had your yo-yos. Another variation of that ball and cup game is this guy right here. And you can see he's a little bit different from this ball and cup game. And this one actually has three different ways to catch the ball. You might catch it on this side. You might catch it on the post right there. Or you can catch it on this smaller end here too. And again, it took practice. It took patience. It took a lot of patience to play one of these. Another toy they might have had as young kids was a Jacob's Ladder. And this one I like to think of as a magic trick. And all you do, if you watch really closely, the top panel will magically move all the way to the bottom. So I'm gonna flip it down and it moves all the way to the bottom. Now it's really not magic, it's actually science. The ropes here act like a lever. You see these little thin straps on the block. And so when you turn that first piece, it's like a window hinge and the rope actually moves and hinges to the second piece, which hinges to the third and all the way down. So these were toys they could make, their parents could make it for them. Another popular thing to do in the early 1800s was rhymes and riddles. If you guys think back to maybe school, you might have heard some rhymes like she sells, she sells by the seashore or Peter Piper or how much wood could a woodchuck chuck. So those were very popular back then in the 1800s for kids too. And you could even make up your own rhyme as a kid. How much, um, anything, you really can make it out of anything. There's another popular rhyme about a copper coffee pot. I want a proper cup of coffee from a proper coffee pot. 
and you get practicing and you can say it really, really quick. Now with Lewis and Clark, within, when they were younger, they would have some of these toys, but they didn't have these on the expedition. We know from the journals they did have, they had foot races, they had horse races, when they were meeting with the native people, Captain Lewis wrote about a target shooting practice for the soldiers. So the soldiers would have to hunt on the trail. And so the captains decided they needed to practice to make sure they had a really good hunting skills for the expedition. So they had a competition to see who could hit the mark the most often with the most accuracy. And the winner would win a dollar, which was a lot of money back then. So they had target shooting practice. They also mentioned dancing and music, of course, with the native people. There's also a game that they mentioned called Prisoner's Base, and that's similar to Capture the Flag today. Another game they wrote about when they met the Mandan tribe was the hoop and pole game. These hoops would be thrown into the air, and you actually try to throw an arrow or a stick through the hoop, and you get certain points for depending on how accurate you were. So there's a lot of games. There's another one, Ring Toss, that they wrote about. So this was a great way for one, the men to relax after a hard day work. Some of those games are really good for training, like the target practice. Games are also good for exercise. You know, in the winter time, you're not moving around a lot. So you would have games to keep you active, keep you exercising. And the games are also a really great way for them to get to know the native people they met. Some of the games I have out here are actually from our exhibit. We have a really great exhibit about the Lakota games. It was made by an artist, a Lakota artist, Mike Marshall from Rosebud, South Dakota. It's a really great exhibit. We have a wind catcher here, and the native people would use material that they had in their surroundings. Oftentimes, after hunting a buffalo, they made sure all the parts of the buffalo or the elk or deer, whatever they hunted, were used for food, for clothing, for shelter, and for toys. So we have like a wooden hoop right here. We have some animal hide for string, a little tuft of horse or buffalo hair, and this is a wind catcher that would tumble in the air on a windy day like today. Another one is a ball right here. On the outside is made from animal hide. So that's that animal skin you might get from a buffalo. It's been cleaned. The stuffing inside is hair, possibly horse or buffalo hair. And then you could stitch it together with sinew. And sinew is a really strong rope. And sinew, you can actually, it comes from an animal. And sinew is basically, it ties your muscles and bones together. So if you were to peel back a layer of skin, which I don't recommend doing, sinew is what ties it all together, basically, a very rough um, definition. So they were using all the parts of the buffalo. They didn't let anything go to waste. And that's how they also made toys and games. And their games always involved a lot of people. You know, it brought the community together. It taught teamwork. It taught patience. It taught skills like patience, hand-eye coordination, accuracy. Because if you're going to be hunting for your food, you need to make sure you're training and you're practicing. You're gaining strength. And so these were some of the toys Lewis and Clark possibly saw on the expedition. And another really cool game that's similar to this ball and cup game over here is this one, this ring toss game right here. And it's just like the ball and cup game. There's actually bones here at the bottom. You have some animal hide for your string. We have this really large needle right here. And then these are hoops of beads. And you would actually try to swing those into the air and try to catch it on the needle, just like that ball and cup game over here. So a lot of these toys, a lot of these games, there's similarities all over the world in different countries and different cultures. You actually see a lot of these similar games played by children everywhere. Now today the game, the game we're gonna make the toy is a variation of a whirly gig. This is what we're gonna make. And it's not going to show up really well on camera, but I actually have a buffalo right here. On the reverse side, I have a little scene of a forest. And when you spin your whirly gig really, really fast for a second, it actually looks like the buffalo is in the middle of the forest. So we're going to make this whirly gig, and it's based off of 
this wooden whirly gig right here. And this might look familiar to some. It's also known as a buzz saw. If you ask your grandparents, they actually probably had one of these at school and they would actually use a button to make their whirly gigs. It's just a simple disc. It has two holes in the middle, just like a button does. A piece of string is looped through those two holes and then it's knotted together. And what happens is when you twist it up really fast and then you pull apart and then you bring it in, it actually makes a whirling sound or a buzz saw noise. So that's really cool. And you can easily make one of these at home just using a really big button, but we're not gonna make one of these whirly gigs. We're gonna make one of these because these are a little bit easier to do. So for your supplies, all you need is paper, some colors, some markers, glue, tape, scissors, and then a bit long stick, or maybe if you have one of those kebab sticks that are you can find in the grocery store. That's all you need, it's a really easy craft. On the worksheet, we will have the template available, but basically all you need, you're gonna have two circles. One circle is gonna be for your background, kind of like that forest scene, and then your other circle is gonna be your main character, like the buffalo. And they're gonna overlap when you glue and tape them together. So you just wanna be careful, wherever you draw your main character, is where it's gonna show up on that background circle. So to give you another example, this one is a fish in a fish tank. So your background is gonna be your fish bowl, and then you wanna draw your fish right in the middle so it shows up in that fish bowl. And so when you spin it really fast, it's gonna look like that fish is in that fish bowl. So it's really easy to do. You have your two circles, you can decorate them, you cut them out, I have some prepared right here. I decided to do a Lewis and Clark themed whirly gig. So for my background, I did the keel boat. So I have a little toy keel boat right here as well. And I want my dog to appear right here at the top of the keel boat. So on my other circle, I'm going to want to make sure my dog is glued right here to that top side of the corner. So when I flip it, it's gonna show right there when we're flipping the whirly gig. So I decided to make a little cutout of Captain Lewis's dog, Seaman the Newfoundland. And so I'm gonna glue him right there because he's gonna show up right there on the keel boat when I glue the two pieces together. So I'm gonna quickly do that. I'm gonna grab some glue right here. On that second circle, I want him to appear on that upper side just to make sure it's totally even. There we go. And just to show you, so that dog, I wanted him to appear right on top of that keel boat. So I kind of placed him where I want, imagine, imagine him standing on the keel boat. And remember, you can do whatever you want. You could do a spider web on one side, a spider on the other. You could do a leaf, you could do a caterpillar. You could have, you know, a bird cage and a bird. But basically, all you're gonna imagine is that when you turn it, that character is gonna appear on your background. And that's half the work. You decorate your two circles. You're gonna grab a little stick right here. It's gonna go right in the middle of that disc of the seam. So you wanna make sure it's right in the middle. I'm going to attach that stick with some tape right here because you don't want it moving too much on you. There we go. Then I'm gonna grab some more glue. And just remember, you want both scenes facing the same direction. So you're gonna make sure it both lines up. And then I'm gonna glue the two circles together here. And then all you have to do is let it dry and then you're ready to spin. And you might see whirly gigs all over the place. You have those buttons whirly gigs, you have these paper whirly gigs, you have those pinwheels that you might see in somebody's friend front yard. So whirly gigs are basically any toy that spins really quickly and they have a really fun design. There we go, so we glue those two circles together and you are ready to go. 
And then this one's a little wet still, but when you spin it just fast enough, it'll look like Captain Lewis's dog is on the keel boats. And that's all there is to it. It's a really easy design. Now, I encourage you guys to make your own whirly gigs and to also look at some of these old colonial games in your house. You might have some in storage or look for them maybe in a toy shop or feel free to make your own. You know, if you know anybody who's a really good carpenter who can help you make them, I recommend, you know, finding them, giving them a try, pulling out those old board games like checkers and chess and having some fun with the family or friends. It's a really great craft to do this summer. And of course, if you have questions, feel free to place them in the comments below. We'll have the worksheets in the comments and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.